Well, this is a live look right now at the radar of Hurricane Milton. It's already one of the most powerful hurricanes we've ever seen in the Atlantic. Chris joins us now to break down how Milton's power has already exceeded expectations in this morning's weather IQ. Chris. Thanks a lot, Sarah. I stood up here yesterday at this time and Milton had sustained winds at 100 miles per hour. Well, it peaked up to 180 miles per hour, and I really want to show you why before we get into the historic stats. So look at the eye wall. This is called a pinhole eye wall because it's so small. The way I was describing yesterday during our noon show, it's like a figure skater. When the arms are out, they're going to be going slow, but as they tuck them in, they spin faster. The same thing goes here, and then that's also going to lead to a faster development once we have that. And it went through what was called the eye wall replacement cycle. So that's why you saw an eye wall, it disappeared, it got bigger, it disappeared, and it's going to go through that process again. Now let's look at the stats. Category 5 hurricanes, this is actually the second one that we've seen this year, peaking to 180 miles per hour. This is only the seventh one that we've ever had in October, and the 42nd in the history dating back to 1924. But look at this development. One record that we tied, Hurricane Wilma, which is one of the most infamous hurricanes, 85 miles per hour is where we were at 5 p.m. on Sunday. By 5 p.m. on Monday, 180 miles per hour. That's a growth of 95 miles per hour. It was just about a month ago. We had a weather IQ on what was going to be rapid intensification. And this it should be added to that story because it's historic. Also, Wilma bringing that up had a low pressure of 882 millibars. That is the lowest ever recorded in the Atlantic Basin. Milton actually dropped down to 897, so making the top five there. And as far as overall strongest sustained winds, Allen back in 1980 hit 190. However, Milton makes the history books 180 miles per hour. So a historic storm. Also, it's going to be a historic track as well. So Larry, I'm going to step over here. It's really unprecedented about how quickly that it intensified and it kind of baffled even the National Hurricane Center that it exceeded their expectations by 15 to 20 miles per hour. I'm just uh -huh. glad that it didn't make it. it well, when we know it made impacts you could happen, but it did not hit there directly. Exactly. With the wind force right there. It's also interesting. This is the second hurricane with its origination in the Caribbean mm -hmm. and then move rather than Atlantic Ocean, rather yeah. than off the coast of Africa. So let's get the latest on this a powerful hurricane almost again at Category 5. It's a very strong exceptionally winds at a, exceptional winds at 155 miles per hour. That's sustained winds getting some gusts right now to 190 miles an hour, moving east-northeast at about 12 miles an hour. Expected to take that turn more to the northeast and head towards Florida. Current position is pretty close to Progreso, Mexico. That's in the Yucatan Peninsula. So that's Cancun and Cozumel. A lot of people visit that place. As it takes that turn to the northeast, uh, landfall somewhere maybe near Tampa, Florida that would be late Wednesday, maybe into early Thursday morning. This is 2 a.m. Thursday morning. Uh, could be pretty close to Tampa. The, this is a fast moving storm system, moves across Florida, then heads out into the Atlantic Ocean, moves away from the East Coast, and that is good news. We could, the impacts that we may see locally would be maybe towards around Charleston, Savannah. They could get some gusty winds, but one of the major issues is the storm surge that would be around Tampa St. Pete all the way down to Fort Myers, and that's anywhere from about 12 to 15 foot storm surge. Remember, Elaine did devastation to the same area, so this is, I mean, twice like this within a week is just an unfortunate situation. The wind, obviously, once again, that is a major issue. Uh, the early tomorrow, uh, early Thursday morning, somewhere near Tampa, those uh, winds uh, sustained maybe about 125 miles an hour at landfall, then eventually moves out in the Atlantic, but you can still see some pretty gusty winds between Jacksonville, Florida, Savannah, Georgia, and Charleston and South Carolina, but it's still not expected to cause any major issues across the Carolinas, especially the Charlotte area.